little stars. I hope that you're doing so, so well today. If you're new here, welcome to my little slice of pie here on the internet. My name is Molly and I create lots of different content ranging from lifestyle to spooky story Sundays, beauty and thrifting videos. So if any of that sounds cool to you, then I'd love it if you stick around and subscribe and like this video if you like it. For today's video, I have a spooky story Sunday installment and it is 10 of the most haunted places in Florida. All credit goes to the blog Westgate Resorts and this was written by Rich Weidman, so big shout out to him. I just love the paranormal and researching and reading stories like this is so fun. I love to spread them around, so shout out to this blog and I'll link it down below. So if you want to read these for yourself, do a little bit more investigating or research for your own paranormal goodness, then definitely check it out. Without further ado, let's just get into today's Spooky Story Sunday. So I wanted to do Florida because I've traveled there many times throughout my childhood and I've heard a few creepy things about places in Florida and a few of these I do recognize by just their name but I'm very excited to share this with you all and let's just buckle down and get right into it. Starting with number one is the St. Augustine Lighthouse, St. Augustine. You can probably hear a helicopter flying over, <laughs> sorry about that. Founded in 1565 and considered the oldest city in the United States, St. Augustine has also earned a reputation as the most haunted city in Florida. One of the most legendary haunted sites in St. Augustine happens to be the 160 foot tall St. Augustine Lighthouse, which was constructed in 1874 and features 219 spiral steps to the top. Some visitors to the haunted lighthouse have reported hearing children laughter and footsteps because two teenagers according to history said that in the late 1800s in the adjacent bay there was a drowning while others have heard mysterious voices smelled cigar smoke and viewed a shadowy figure at the top of the lighthouse and or run into the so-called man in blue in the basement of the former lighthouse keeper's house the saint augustine lighthouse even made several appearances on the now defunct paranormal reality tv series ghost hunters. In addition, Country Living Magazine listed the St. Augustine Lighthouse among 25 of the most haunted places in America that horror fans need to visit. Other alleged haunted sites in St. Augustine include Castillo de San Marcos, Old Jail, Spanish Military Hospital, Casa Monica Hotel, Flagler College, Oldest Wooden Schoolhouse, Huguenot Cemetery, Casablanca Inn, and Harry's Seafood Bar and Grill, among others. So I'm sorry, that was such a tongue twister for me. I have no idea why. I just cannot speak today. <laughs> that is the first place. So now I'm moving on to number two, the Biltmore Hotel in Coral Gables. A massive luxury hotel that first opens its doors in 1926, the Biltmore Hotel in Coral Gables later served as a military hospital during World War II, a VA hospital after the war, and even the campus of University of Miami Medical School before reverting back to a luxury hotel in 1987. Guests of the Biltmore during the early years included everyone from President Franklin Delano Roosevelt to gangster Al Scarface Capone. The Biltmore was also a famous favorite among Jazz Age revelers. Designated as a National Historic Landmark in 1996, the Biltmore is considered one of the most haunted hotels in Florida. One of the ghosts reportedly haunting the Biltmore is none other than the notorious gangster Thomas Fatty Walsh, who was murdered on the 13th floor of the Biltmore over a gambling dispute in 1929. Guests have experienced such phenomena as lights switching on and off, elevators taking them to the wrong floors, inexplicable sounds, and cryptic messages discovered scrawled on the mirrors. Others allege that haunted sites in the Miami area, including the Deering Estate, Crow Castle, Miami City Cemetery, Coconut Grove Playhouse, Anderson's General Store, Villa Paula Mansion, and Pinewood Cemetery, among others. Very interesting. Number three, the Devil's Chair, Lake Helen, Casadaga Cemetery, and Casadaga. I hope that I'm saying that right, or maybe it's Casadaga. I think that sounds more right. I don't know. You Floridians, let me know. Nestled just off Interstate 4 between D-Land and Deltona, the community of Casadega is known for its haunted history, especially the so-called Devil's Chair, an allegedly haunted Florida landmark at Lake Helena Casadega Cemetery. According to legend, if you sit in the huge brick chair at midnight, the devil himself will make an appearance. And if you can leave a can of beer on the devil's chair, it will reportedly be empty the next morning. A much less interesting but significantly more plausible story about the origins of the devil's chair is that it was simply constructed as a mourning chair, so visitors to the cemetery could sit and pay respects to their dearly departed loved ones. Listed on the National Register of Historic Places and widely considered the psychic center of the world, Casadega was founded as a spiritualistic community by George Colby in 1875. Other alleged haunted sites in Casadega include the landmark Casadega Hotel, which was constructed in 1928 and houses Sinatra Restaurante, a psychic center. Very cool. Oh, this one gives me the heebie-jeebies because one of my good old friends had visited this many times and this haunted doll you may have heard of. Number four is Robert the Haunted Doll, Fort East Martello, 
Museum in Key West. Built during the Civil War and listed on the National Register of Historic Places, Fort East Martello in Key West is also home to Robert the Haunted Doll, one of the creepiest dolls in existence. The allegedly haunted doll once belonged to the eccentric Key West artist Robert Eugene Otto from 1900 to 1974, who used to blame the doll, which was reportedly given to him by a Bohemian servant girl, for all kinds of mischief. Visitors to the museum have reported not only seeing Robert the doll move and change facial expressions, but also make giggling noises. And you're also, I've heard this from both my friend and also reading up on this doll, is that you're not supposed to take pictures of him without his consent. So you're supposed to ask, and people have said that if they don't ask, Ask for permission that their cameras will start acting up that it will just stop working in general. Paranormal is kind of known for messing with electronics so that's pretty crazy and I've also heard that even when you do ask for his permission that sometimes he'll still be mad at you and make your camera go wonky so be careful if you check out this place. Next is number five, the Devil's Tree Oak Hammock Park in Port St. Lucie. A large and mysterious oak tree lies down a dirt nature trail in the corner of Oak Hammock Park in Port St. Lucie, known as the Devil's Tree. It was the site of a series of gruesome murders in the early 1970s and today believed to be possessed by evil spirits. According to legend, several failed attempts have been made to cut down the tree over the years, and some visitors to the park at night have reported seeing figures in dark hooded capes performing satanic rituals near the tree. A local priest even allegedly attempted to perform an exorcism here back in the early 1990s. Other park visitors claimed to have viewed ghosts hanging from the branches of the Devil's Tree. In addition to its infamous oak tree, Oak Hammock Park, which was established in 2000, features a boat and canoe launch, two fishing piers, three miles of hiking trails, a pavilion, butterfly garden, and a playground. So a very beautiful place it sounds like, but has some creepy vibes with it. Moving on to number six is the Greenwood Cemetery in Orlando. Originally known as Orlando Cemetery and opened in 1880, Greenwood Cemetery encompasses 86 acres and is well known for its haunted history. Visitors to the cemetery have reported seeing ghostly children playing and laughing among the tombstones, as well as the ghosts of Confederate soldiers roaming aimlessly among the huge live oak trees. Moonlight walking tours of Greenwood Cemetery are available. Don't miss the chance to view the creepy Fred Weeks mausoleum. The ghost of Weeks himself is said to be occasionally wandering through the cemetery at night. And Thomas Jefferson's grandson, Francis Wallace Epis, is buried in Greenwood Cemetery. So that's really cool. Go check it out. Number seven is the Devil's School in Jacksonville. Widely considered the most haunted place in Jacksonville and the so-called Devil's School, and we're seeing a, a pattern here with the Devil's stuff, so that's, that's kind of creepy, but... I don't know. Near an I-95 and I-10 in Jacksonville has been the source of numerous outrages. Urban legends over the years, such as a crazed janitor who burns students alive in the boiler room, and even a cannibalistic school principal. First opened in 1918 as Riverside Grammar School, which later became Annie Little Elementary School. The school closed in 1960 and the abandoned building was left to decay. In addition to being defaced by graffiti artists and vandals, the building was also allegedly used for satanic rituals. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Designated a historic landmark by the Jacksonville City Council in 2000, the allegedly haunted school building is strictly off limits to visitors and fenced with a keep out sign. Although curious sightseers can still see the view of the school outside on the street. That is creepy what's happening down there with satanic rituals and stuff. Number eight is the Capitol Theater in Clearwater, a historic theater that first opened in 1921 with the silent film Dinty. The Capitol Theater is not only one of the oldest operating theaters in the Sunshine State, but also allegedly one of the most haunted. In fact, the Capitol Theater is reportedly the home of three spirits, an old sea captain, a former theater manager named Bill, and a young girl known to play tricks on visitors. In 2013, the 750 seat Capitol Theater underwent an $11 million renovation and is managed by Ruth Eckerd Hall. Other alleged haunted sites in Clearwater include Sylvan Abbey Memorial Park, home of the infamous Ghost Shack. That sounds cool. I have been to Clearwater before, Orlando. I had family that lived in Jacksonville. I'll have to ask and see if they've... because the locals know where it's at when it comes to haunted places. Number nine is Fort Pickens, Gulf Islands National Seashore. Named after American Revolutionary War hero Andrew Pickens, Fort Pickens is located on Pensacola Beach at Gulf Islands National Seashore. Designed by French engineer Simon Bernard and completed in 1834 with a total of 21.5 million bricks, Fort Pickens was later used as a prison for legendary Apache chief Geronimo and his Confederates. Visitors have reported spotting mysterious lights, hearing footsteps, and viewing the ghosts of soldiers, as well as the spirit of Geronimo wandering around Fort Pickens. Creepy. And the last, but certainly not the least, is number 10, the Cuban Club in Tampa. 
Listed among the Travel Channel's top 10 most haunted places, the Cuban Club lies within Tampa's bustling Ybor City neighborhood. Built in 1917, the Cuban Club evolved into an immensely popular hangout for Cuban immigrants. Listed on the National Register of Historic Places, the Cuban Club is allegedly haunted by several ghostly spirits, including an actor who reportedly committed suicide on stage, a theater board member murdered during an argument, and an elegant lady in a misty dress and a young boy playing on the theater steps. The Cuban Club is one of the several stops on the Ybor City Ghost Tour. Other alleged haunted sites in Tampa slash the St. Petersburg area include Flora Brewery Company, Tampa Theater, Don Caesar Hotel, the University of South Florida Library, the Fort De Soto Campground and Plant Hall at the University of Tampa. I've stayed in Tampa and the St. Petersburg area before. We love St. Pete's Beach and I just can't believe I haven't heard of this stuff before. We did go on a ghost tour when we went to New York as a family. That's the closest we've ever gotten to like doing paranormal stuff. So let me know if you've ever visited any of these places. As always, I would love it if you comment down below and let me know which place you'd like to visit yourself. I think that that last one would be cool to check out as well as checking out the Key West region and visiting the doll and paying my respects to him. If you enjoyed today's video, I would love it if you subscribe and like this video. And as always, shine bright and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys!